Thanks. Uh, so, um, all right. So, I, I boy, you know what? I, and I, I'm, 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 you know, it seemed like we were starting. I like, how many feel two hours, Dan? Uh, but, but uh, anyway, all right. Let me let me get moving here, uh, and let me, and let me level set. Uh, the uh, so so oh yeah for the uh, so I'm James Kakaska, CTO for Net Ally. We're gonna talk a little bit about Wi-Fi 6E. Uh, so you know you already saw this. Lots of change. Uh, what are you gonna do about channel plans, preferred scanning channels? How wide are you gonna make things? How are you gonna what's your SSID plan? What about AFC coming along? OBSS, what, how do you treat path loss, right? Saw the Cisco stuff yesterday on path loss. That was interesting. Uh, you know, and then, and, then, and then all this other stuff, it's dragging in on the wireline side. Well, I, I got to tell you, it has not been easy, right? And, and I think a couple of years, I, uh, in fact, I talked to Roel a while ago, and I was just like, man, it's just, it's just not stable, right? And, and so, you know, we all rushed out and bought our AX210s, only to find out that the current driver doesn't work. You know, uh, and and so I'm constantly rolling back my driver, right? Uh, and and uh, to to make it uh, to make it work the way that it did a year ago. Uh, and so newer isn't necessarily. But I got this whole thing where a perfectly good laptop won't go to Windows 11, but that's the only way I can get the driver. I mean, I, and I don't need to talk about drivers. Right? You 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 all know what a problem drivers are. But here's one you, you may not be aware of, right? As we were on the bleeding edge and struggling to get enterprise, and of course the resi market, you know, blows it up first. Uh, I'm sitting here going, it took me a little while, right? It took like getting three different APs and I'm like, where's the channels below 33? Well, you know, what's going on here, right? I, I, yeah, you give me all this bandwidth, but I can't seem to give I can't seem to get there, right? So I started doing a little bit of research around, talked to Dave Coleman, uh, and uh, and 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 came to discover that in the in the rush to pound chests about we've got 6E, uh, that that the filters, the filter components weren't ready yet and they weren't sharp enough. And so at the same time that Uni 4 crept up with channel 177, right? Up to up to the Almost the, almost six gig, channel one e was starting you know a hundred megahertz higher, and the filters weren't sharp enough. And at the same time, then I would dig a little deeper, did a little more research, and turns out at the same time, you know the FCC was saying, oh no 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 no, you need to be sharp. You you better you better be rolling off quick, right? Because you you six gig guys can't better not be mucking with with uni four, right? And so so. I think what happened was everybody was such in a rush that 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 they decided, oh, you know, we're just going to disable those channels, right? So I mean, it's one thing to ship to ship. Okay, it's a minimal viable software offering, and we'll pick it up in V2, right? But it, it's quite another to be like, okay, well, mm, uh, your AP is never going to go there, right? So 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 the, you know, so I, I you know, the interesting thing is we're in this space. Yeah, I, I know you're dealing with this. You can imagine what, what we're dealing with. I mean, it's like every week I'm getting something that somebody's like, what's going on with this? And we're like, and we have to prove to them that that it's not right, you know, because it's everybody's interpretation of the standard. At the end of the day, some guy looking at this, this legal document, you know, literally trying to interpret it writing code, you know, and and so, you know, I get in one AP, Guess what? It's not doing multi BSSID, but it is doing fills, right? So here, here, here's a capture off of it, right? And here it is in the six gig band. There, there's my beacons, but but these two beacons here, if I can see how tight they are, that's two different SSIDs. So it's not doing multi BSSID. In fact, this drives me nuts. When they start, when they start mucking bits in the manufacturer prefix that that take them outside of their their manufacturer assigned space. It, it's back to what I was talking about, about Mac randomization, just, you know, crazy. Uh, and so, uh, but, but then look at the, all these fills frames are coming out every 20 milliseconds, right? Uh, so that was interesting. Uh, and, and then, and I went to look at fills. So I'm like, oh, well, let me research fills. Well, here we haven't even decided if we're doing or not doing fills frame. And I think the decision is we're not doing fills frames, but some guys already applied for a patent on a, on a, on a, on a modified fills <laughs> frame. I mean, seriously, well, you know, how, how are we gonna keep up with this stuff, right? So, and, 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 and 
you know, and I'm used to living in this space, right? We, we, we had a thing a couple months ago, then uh, a customer said, hey, you're failing POE, you're failing a POE test. And you know what? We have to go out, get that switch, bring it into the lab, take one of our engineers that already isn't figuring out how to, how to, what components he can change out because of supply chain issues, get him to look at this so that we can send the vendor an email saying, hey, you're, you're violating, this is literally right out of the document we sent them, right? That, that hey, you are violating, you're, you're, you're violating the spec, you're not detecting this, you're not doing the signatures right, you know, and, and, I'll, and I won't tell you who they are, uh, but but you know that's the world we live in, right? So I'm I'm so I don't want to rampage here, right? But but you know, <laughs> I, I I this one just just happened earlier this week. Uh, somebody said, hey, you're not getting the channel number right, and and for the first time in our lives, we had seen that the DS uh, parameter information element was it was in was in the was in the beacon off of a six gig guy, right? Up to this point, we've been operating down here in the HE elements, understanding channels and ranges and all that. DS came in, and we 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 just weren't set up to parse it, you know. So 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 we did end up changing that, right? And and it and it comes back to something I learned, you know, 20, 30 years ago, right? I, I at one point in my youth. I was at HP and we were doing IEEE 488, GPIB, HPIB, whatever you call it. And I was programming on a 9825 doing test automation. And I was a part of this uh, uh, 48.2 IEEE standards committee. Uh, I was HP's re representative to that because we were trying to define how, how to make things talk. It was almost as if the physical and Mac layer existed, but the TCP IP part didn't, right? And, 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 I, the thing that stuck with, with me through that was was talk precisely, listen forgivingly, right? And so, so as a test and measurement vendor, you know, even though that 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 POE thing is an issue, we had to soften it from a hard failure to a warning. Okay, you know, because because PDs were working with it, right? And then we kind of looked like idiots, even though it was out of spec, right? So, so, so this is this is the business we try to be in: talk precisely, listen forgivingly. So. But but as I talk to customers, you know, man, I mean, you know, they're just so, all these new technologies. How do I even begin to keep up with this? And then I get into my deployment options, and then and then all this is happening in the midst of of the Great Resignation, and 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 more and more remote sites due to either travel restrictions or. Or, or mergers and acquisitions, and then I got all these vendor claims and trust and licensing, and 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 oh, by the way, those old uh, uh, zebra scanner guns, you know, that we have ten thousand of, those still need to work on B, you know, and and then uh, and so so I, I sort of view our role as being, you know, the, the you think about the new air check, right? It's going to be your handheld, you know, second source of truth because you're not always going to be in the knock you know, believing that RRM is taking care of everything and machine learning is fixing every problem, right? So, so I think that's where we come in. And, and when I look at Wi-Fi 7, it feels a little bit like this to me. Uh, you know, bar worker shop, bartender wanted. You know, it just, it just feels <laughs> too still. Uh, you know, so, so it, it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, and, and but, but uh, in fact, you know, we we were on a roll to actually deliver Wi-Fi six when when they uncorked the six gig band, you know, and then and then we decided, well, we don't want to ship a product for six months or eight months, you know, only because six gig is such a hardware change, right? You know, and uh, and so so we 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 did that, and that's kind of what's held us back, right? On 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 getting the new air check was was waiting for six E had to do it in Etherscope first. That was a few months ago. Now 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 it's an air check. That'll be in a couple months. Uh, so so when I look at Wi Fi seven, I really have to kind of you know I don't know just try not to be too jaded, right? But but we're watching all this diversity in six and sixy deployments and 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 it's turning into the new wild west and and here's these guys claiming they've got seven you know running uh you know when okay we were the first ones to do a 6e product echo house next week seven signals is, is is probably you know shortly thereafter right you know we're all racing after just trying to get 6e and and i think the part that really kind of you know pisses me off to be honest with you is these jack wagons won't talk to us 
you know? <laughs> I mean, because you know why? We're not a major design work, you know? And, and so we're, we don't fit their KPI schedule. And so we have to go through a second level proxy to, 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 to it, it, you know, to even get close to talking to these people, pay by the hour, right, with their ODM. So, so it, it's just, it's just kind of like, so, so you can call it an ecosystem, but if you don't have test and measurement, if you don't have survey, if you don't have monitoring, right, how much of an ecosystem is it? You know, it, it, there's more to an ecosystem than just your chipsets, right? So, and, 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 and hey, maybe you could talk to somebody who's trying to improve the world of Wi-Fi, even if they're not ordering a million chips a year, you know, so, all right, soapbox off, sorry. Uh, so, and, 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 and then I say to myself, hey, you know what, this is okay. Maybe I should embrace the mayhem. <laughs> right? like, what the, what, 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 you know why not right so so because because the test and the measurement industry is built on mayhem right so uh so you know let, let's go to some of the original mayhem i i remember starting in 95 coming out of oscilloscopes and logic analyzers and and boy you know the fact that ethernet kind of went along with telco and that you know and that it wasn't one pair two pair three pair four pair Right, and and this 316. I remember going on our first customer business they had a 55 gallon bar trash barrel filled with patch cables that they had built themselves in a patch party with student labor, uh, and 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 didn't realize this. Right, and 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 the beautiful thing is to detect this. You don't just need simple continuity. You need you need a TDR. You need a impedance split pair detection. Right. So so that certainly built a whole industry of cable test. Right, and then. And then you ever think about how much easier our lives would be if it was just if we just would have been channels one, two, and three, you know? And and so we we have this uh, uh, you, you know we look at our data anonymized and 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 uh, out of uh, you know in fact there's a little bit of data right you know but let's say well over sixteen thousand sites and and you know two thirds of a million BSS IDs we've seen anonymized and link live and and. And you know, and you can see the channel usage right here. And you know, one is probably the default out of the box. So that's a little more popular and all that other stuff. But the reality is, so this is the percentage of BSS IDs is low, right? Not in the on the off channels. But if you look at it from a site perspective, it, it's about a third of the sites, you know, have have just one of those channels. In fact, the, the way I didn't slice the data that I should have is is how many sites have any of these? And I bet you it's it's. 99%. Uh, so, so, you know, mayhem, I should embrace this. So uh, here's, here's Keith's beautiful graphic at the bottom. And then I overlaid our, our, uh, our, uh, our, our findings here, right? And, it, and it's kind of interesting, you know, you can see, you know, things pick up in uni three, the, the first in the, the first always ends up being the, 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 the most predominant, uh, you know, all kinds of all kinds of interesting ways to interpret this data, right? But 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 the reality is, you know, and so so maybe the point is, you know, six gig looks clean now. Just wait, right? And 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 because because five gig looked cleaned at one point, but but what what was given with number of channels was taken away with channel widths, you know. And so and so when we look at it, you know, I can basically say. 75% of the sites had, uh, or, or uh, only 25% of sites had no adjacent channel interference. It's only slightly better for five gig, you know? And so, uh, so all right, so let me go to my bad five demo uh, and I'm gonna flip to here. This is interesting. I, 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 I get to look at a lot of surveys uh, and, and it's mind blowing, of course. But this one is this one's kind of unique, right? Because uh, I got called in on this uh, high end residence, and uh, and and uh, and they're having problems. And said, okay, you, you can get in at thirty minutes, you know, while the owner's napping or something. And 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 so I did. And uh, uh, and and you can look at the signal level, but then and but and they're having problems, right? And they were saying, well, your your tool sucks, right? So uh, so came in here, and let's just look here right and and i was like holy mackerel look look at all these ssids right and so came in well what's what's your what's your main network right and 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 immediately let me get rid of this uh and then immediately uh you know was able to say oh 
Okay, well, all right, well, that printer, you could probably turn that off if you're not using it, right? I have no idea what that is. Actually, I, I do now because I looked at it. Uh, but but here's here's the main production. Oh, by the way, it comes in and before it feeds out into the into the separate managed Wi-Fi network, it's they didn't turn off the gateway Wi-Fi, right? So that's in there in the contention too. But but let's go ahead and and uh, and apply this. And now look at that. And then I did, hey, what's the AP coverage? And then I auto scaled that and 20 APs covering that covering that SSID in this house, right? Ended up ended up uh, or 18 BSS, 20 BSSIDs, right? Well, let me let me add another filter here. Let's let's just say, okay, how much of it's in the 2.4? Uh, and and let's go ahead and apply that. Okay, 16. So there were 18 APs uh, in in this place, and and, uh, and 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 it's amazing because I was looking at it, and since we in in our in our uh, I will say survey in our site analytics, uh, we we now have QBSS, right? Well, you know, and I'm not going to hold up QBSS as as the be all and end all, but I tell you what, when you're triangulating on a problem, it's pretty darn handy. And the other benefit is you can get it off the neighbor's AP. You know, so, uh, you know, because you don't need to be a part of that network. So, but, so I'm looking at this and I'm going, hold it. I'm seeing all these APs, you know, are reporting, are reporting, uh, you know, 26%. Let me pull this over here a little closer so I can get it. All these guys are reporting, uh, uh, oops, sorry, here we go. All right. Yeah, are, are reporting uh, all, all this, all this utilization. On, uh, in the 2.4 gig band, and and what the heck's going on here? Well, uh, well, well, oh, maybe there's a bunch of clients. Wrongo, there's two clients in the house connected on 2.4, and yet you've got anywhere from 20 to 50 percent utilization. So then, of course, I, I came in and did our handy. Uh, oh, then I can pick a channel. Let me go ahead in here. Let's clear these chips back out and come in here and. And uh, and then pick a channel, any channel. Let's go six, and come in there. And now with a channel, I can look at beacon overhead, and I'll go ahead and auto scale that. And so here we are, you know, running the first seventeen percent of the airtime is just going to beacons, right? And and so uh, so uh, yeah, it, 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 it's just phenomenal the amount of bad fly out there, even in controlled single environments. And, and I tell you, what, I, I, I'm just blown away. I go anywhere, you know, multi-tenant, you know, I can go to any of the big box stores, but but the reality is there's little kiosks, you know, in the front or in the sides or whatever, and and they all have propped up their own little APs, right? And so so you can't even keep a clean channel plan, you know, anywhere, right? And so uh, and, and and so that's 2.4. Well, you might be like, well, hold it, it's got to be better in five. Uh, so I'll come in here. Let's filter on five and and yeah, okay, a little weaker on the signals, but but if we come in here and look at the look at this. What's so? And then I look at adjacent channel interferers. I've got I've got five adjacent channel interferers here, and and uh, they are. Uh, this isn't quite the. I'm probably I should probably be in a different spot. But but basically what I saw was that the, everything everything in the five gig band was up in Uni three, and they were all running eighty megahertz wide. Uh, except for this desk jet, and uh, and the uh, I'm low TX rate too, uh, and then uh, and then uh, and and so they were they were trouncing on each other with OBSS, right? So e even that even that channel plan wasn't wasn't clean, right? And so so you know that just is some sense of of the bad buy, and it's everywhere, right? I was looking at at this hospital survey and. You know, and you come and you look at this, and and it's like, well, here's here's a, sorry, here here's a. Let's see, let's pick something. Well, hotspots, right? This this is this would be one of Lee's favorites, right? But but you know, and so well, where 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 is that hotspot at? And so it's right there. Uh, and get this guy out of the way again. Oh, he's on channel six. He's a good hotspot. I actually <laughs> come in here and see things. Let me clean that filter chip out. Sorry, filter 
come in here and let me filter on channel. Uh, eight. And let's pick up nine while we're in there and let's apply that. And now, I've, oh, look, there's two hotspots. One's here on channel nine. It's an ellipsis jetpack. At least he's doing 20 meg wide. Here's another one. It's an AT&T hotspot also for minimum basic rates, uh, channel eight, right? So it, you know, it, it's just kind of interesting to see. Uh, so, so anyway, so that's bad for, you know that, you live it every day. So, so yeah, 60, the great promise, okay. You know, I'm already like, I, I was just watching somebody else's webinar and the one guy got a little wrapped around the axle on what's channel 233? You know, and 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 the fact that they they started the channels at over, you know, at least on two point four and five, they didn't overlap the channel numbers. It's going to be like the it's going to be like the the shuttle. Is that metric or English? You know, and so uh, uh, on the O ring, but you know, it, it's literally, you know, there's going to be confusion here. The fact that preferred scanning channels aren't defined for the for the uh, for the off uh, forty megs, and then all the ways that the clients are going to discover. Uh, the fills. So I'm I'm not trying to be down here, right? Here's 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 the here's the spectrum of hope, right? Here's here's <laughs> goodness, here's, here's mayhem, here's Lee, you know. here's here's the yeah, others. 68 P's are okay, but you know they're built by impoverished labor at Foxconn. Uh, so uh, so and that's where I am. But it, it certainly has gotten more complicated, and we had to introduce, you know, three four new representations for for uh, BSSID types, right? And so, uh, and, and this was the original map, right? When I was trying to get the R&D guys on board, it's like, well, this is kind of how the workflow has to go, you know, but, <laughs> but, but let me just demo it just to, just to show you that it is in fact real. So let me just run you through that workflow real quick. So you're coming in here and you're looking at, uh, at, at, your, uh, at your APs and, We'll grab this guy here at the top and uh, five BSSIDs, four SSIDs running across these channels, few clients connected there. But I'll come in on the, on the, uh, on the 2.4, there it is. So if I come in here, I'll see that in the 2.4 gig bed on channel seven, by the way, I didn't put it there. That, that's, it's, that's its auto mode. Uh, so, uh, but but nevertheless, he, he, here he is running along and uh, in fact, seeing some pretty reasonable utilization, but but he is in his 2.4 gig beacon, he, he's transmitting a reduced neighbor port. So we have a fancy new icon. Whenever you go in the screen, we tell you what it is, right? This means that this means it's real, but but there's some other stuff here, right? So we added a new panel here, RNR BSSIDs. So within his 2.4 gig beacon on channel seven, he's also telling us that, hey, I also live on 101 uh, E. This is a step uh, to the previous question, will I see any of this on, 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 a, uh, on a non six gig ether scope? Uh, you'll, you'll get uh, the R and R stuff. Uh, so then, uh, so I can then come in here. And in fact, just by even looking at this, I can tell that, that, in, that in that beacon, of the three different SSIDs on channel 101 uh, and guest OW, that's what you expect, and then and then and then something encrypted. And all this works with enterprise too. I just don't want to deal with it at home. Uh, and so, uh, but I can come over here to this guy, and now I'm on the now I'm on that same AP, uh, and now on channel 101, he's sending out AX only, uh, and uh, and he is the He's the transmitter of the beacon, right? And then, but he is carrying with him these two non-transmitted guys dashed here, which is the guest and the hidden. Uh, so that gives you a sense of how we decided to, uh, how to do the, uh, the decoder ring. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, uh, the, uh, you know, since the expert is never where the problem is, I'm gonna remote into a unit. Uh, that that was dropped into a site, and uh, and then uh, and I want to show you the power of the power of filter and sort. And the and the and the cool thing is is depending. So filter says 
you see me filtering, right? This band or only these channels or only this technology or only security type of, you know, those, that's to cut down the space. But, but sorting is where you can really, sorts have different applications. If you're looking at security stuff, you might be more interested in, in sorting on security types or authorizations. Uh, troubleshooting is, you know, more about signal levels and retries and stuff in the air. Uh, provisioning is more about that I get the right channels and widths and, and, and basic rates and TX powers. And so, so my last demo will be to remote in uh, and maybe, I'll tell you what, I'm going to kill my BNC here, just so you know that I'm not pulling your leg here. And let me just come in here first to, oh, wrong stack. Uh, okay, let's come in here. Here's my air check, the one I've been BNCing into, but let's go ahead and remote in through the cloud service, right? So this could be anywhere. It doesn't have to be next to me, right? So voila, there it is, you know. So like I said, just, just drop it in and, and 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 run it remotely and and all they need to do is just connect to the wi-fi you know using using what you'd expect you know so uh so anyway uh but but let me go to a let me go to a, a, a unit that's in a little more interesting place and and so i'm going to remote into him and uh you know this takes a little bit right because we can't just reach into that from the outside so the unit has to heartbeat out every 15 seconds so wherever i am in the circadian rhythm is is, is how it lands so let me come in here same wi-fi i'm just going to go to the well um, so here you go this will give you some sense of it right so here's the here's the channel map right and 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 it's a mess in fact if i go to the new overlap here it, it, it's almost decipherable indecipherable uh and but but if i come up here you know it does get a little bit better sort of in fact even here i can just see up oh, up oh, look at these guys same channel swatch three different primaries hmm not good uh so uh but i'll uh i'll and and then and then here we pick it up with 60. Remember, I said there's nothing in one through 29. Uh, yep, yeah, there you go. Uh, and so uh, here you can start to see some stuff. Here here's uh, here's guy here's already in 60 sharing the same uh, 160 meg wide with different primaries, right? So, but but what I really wanted to show you was the filter and sorts. And so I'll go into BSSIDs, right? And and so. So here's 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 270 things, you know, pushing packets out into the air, right? And so what's kind of nice here is you can you can come in. In fact, it's amazing how much you since since we we designed the filters to be progressive, things go away as you as you look at stuff, right? So right now I have eight different security types, for example. But if I was to cut down to the six gig band. I've only got I've only got two, right? So in fact, we're not even running any OWE there. Uh, so so it's kind of nice because because the the filters. In fact, a lot of times you can troubleshoot just using the filter panel. Let's say you thought that your whole deployment was supposed to be uh, was supposed on six gig that everything was supposed to be only uh, only uh, uh, 160, you know, or only 80. Whoa, hold it! What's going on here? Who, who, who's running 160 right right so here's the filters and back and James, and yes. James I have a question for the channel numbers I, I noticed you and you talked about it a little bit earlier you you, you guys added the e at, at the end of the channel number so we know we're talking about six gigahertz is this something that um, you just did at NetLi or is it something you're talking to the other guys so we can have some sort of standard across AP vendors and yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it, 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 it's just something we did because I didn't know what else to do, and and we wanted to differentiate it. And, and in fact, in fact, what I what I really owe the community is uh, is based on the channel width, also showing the the, uh, the 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 other channel, right? Think about Keith's map, right? You know, it's mm -hmm. one five nine, you know, but 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 when it's forty meg wide, it's really this right and so so and we'll and we'll get there right but uh but i can i can look at i can basically look at 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 this and 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 kind of filter through and then and then based on how you sort uh you know and this is where we're really rich with the sorts you can bring things to the 
to the top, right? So, uh, so let me. Uh, so here I was just looking at okay, why are these guys running? In fact, I can. I even if I didn't, even if I took away this this channel width filter, and I was just looking at the six gig band. I could decide to sort on channel widths, which I just didn't do. Uh, there we go. And I could immediately see I got some 80s and I got some some 160s, right? So uh, so uh, so kind of this power to slice and dice through this, but the 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 the, 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 the sorts are 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 pretty amazing. And and when you combine it with filters, it, it's just that ability to to slice and dice. Let me let me actually come back in here and uh, work that down, get that down. Uh, Get that. Oh, here, here's. Remember before 160 wide, there was kind of the bonded, right? Well, who's still running bonded here? Uh, and you know, we still got Naruba running running that, right? Uh, and so, okay, fine. Uh, and uh, and let me get rid of that. And then let's let's not focus on widths. Let's go to security. Oh, here's a good one. Web. Oh my gosh. What what could be running web? In, in this environment, right? And uh, and you can see when I did that, uh, that the, that, you know, well, I can already tell you there's, there's gonna be something in 2.4 and there's gonna be something in five. And I can tell you it's gonna be on channels 11 and 112. And, you know, and so, and I, but I also know it's gonna be only one width, right? So you can kind of see how the filters work here, but let's go, let's go see what's running web. Uh, this guy here and, okay, there's some hidden SSID running web, boy, talk about a security risk, uh, on channel 11. And, and, uh, and if I were to look at problems, he's been thrashing channels. He's gone between 11 and one. Uh, and, and if I wanted to get a better sense of that whole AP, I could click on the AP and see that in fact, it's, it's running, uh, uh, Two different SSIDs, and and it's some Meraki that we have configured with four different PSSIDs. It's on eleven and one twelve, and so you can kind of get a sense for the the security type and and all that. So uh, so anyway, uh, that that uh, gives you an idea of of kind of the filters and and the sorts and the power of all that. Uh, so pr pretty pretty phenomenal stuff, especially when you think it's in your hand on the go. And, and look at all these, you know, we've really built this out over the versions, right? And, and uh, in fact, even out of the, the, the QBSS, I, should, I gotta show you one more just cause it's so rich. Uh, the, uh, let's see here, go back over here. Uh, so even if I came in here wide open on my BSS IDs uh, with no filters, right? Here, here they all are. I can just go and sort by, I can find out who's got the most stations. Nineteen hooked up to that guy, or I can come in. Oh, you know what that is? That's the realtors next door. That's not even us. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and and then uh, and then I can come in or come in and say, hey, what's the channel utilizations? QBSS. Look at this channel six, ninety six percent, ninety five percent. And this, I did I did a policing action last week and we're, uh, with the Netscout guys and said, you guys are running on channel four. You know, on on your production stuff, and so, but but you can just see, you know, how trashed out it it is on eleven, on you know, on and on and on, right? And so, and 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 of course, I could come in and you know, that that's QBSS, right? That's the AP's version of of utilization. Like I said, I'm not gonna you know count on algorithmic consistency there but but you know what it's when you're triangulating it's pretty darn good because if i came in here and looked at the rf and traffic stats on that i would see you know fairly pegged out utilization so uh so this we're seeing in the air qbss we're getting through the beacons right so 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 how do we help right uh i i think our job at net ally is to live you know dan Clunky, right? This he came up with this three, four years ago, right? When we were carving out NetAlly and what the mantra was, right? Simplicity, visibility, collaboration. We 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 try to, you know, have that at the, you know, we we try to 
we try to walk the talk, right? And so, you know, we have the simplicity we believe to empower smart hands, to allow you to can those auto tests, to, to have complete workflows, to, to, to be able to push a floor plan down to a unit, to have literally a, an office admin walk around and do a troubleshooting uh, survey, right? Visibility, complexity decodering, all the stuff I've been showing you. Think about R and Rs and multi BSS IDs, and 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 the way that we're helping you understand how things are provisioned and configured, and then collaboration. And and my example for that is it would be it would be remote operation, and then and then the sharing demo where you can take anything you've gathered and share it with 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 neighbors or vendors or colleagues. So on the um, the mapping of the wired network. Yes. Uh, a lot of IT networks will block responses to certain messages, and it looked like you were sending messages in and basing everything on a response. So I wanted to get your, your yeah. feedback on that. And the other thing is, can you do it in such a way that you can avoid detection so that you don't trigger alarms yeah. in the IT system that someone's probing me? Yeah. Um, so yeah. you can, I'm not suggesting you think it's a hacking tool, but I'm yeah. just saying, you know, you don't want to trigger a lot of alarms. Yeah. In fact, this just came up two weeks ago. We, we had a customer at a, at a large, uh, well-renowned health facility with an etherscope uh, that said, oh man, I triggered the IDS. Right, intrusion detection system. And so I said, well, hey, I'll tell you what, go into go into discovery settings. And if you go down here, uh, you know, past extended ranges, past all the ports you can discover out, partial all this other stuff, and you take your ARP sweep rate and you crank it down to uh, 20 per second. And the last time I looked at this on Cisco IDS, this is about 23 per second, and and maybe that's configurable, but but uh, uh, but basically empirically, at least in this case, he cranked it down to to 20 per second. That slows down our discovery rate, and uh, and and you can also slow down the SNMP rate, and and uh, and and it worked fine. He reported back a day later, hey, I'm using it. It's great. I'm discovering the network. So great question. Thank and you. are you seeing many companies blocking those type of messaging? You don't get any response back at all? Like blocking ARP? Well, not ARP, but I think it's got some other messaging going on there too, right? Uh, you know, they, you know it, it's interesting, right? We're in this constant battle of how do you, how do you work with Chromecasting and, and, you know, sharing and all these other, you know, protocols and things and what do you have open and closed and and all that but but you know in general we're doing most of the things through ARP and then we find the stations then we then we see what ports are open then we then we you know and we send specific queries you know MDNS tends to coax names out of Apple devices uh, NetBIOS coaxes it out of window devices uh, if they get if SNMPs open you know we that gets us into a whole set of you know goodness of you know everything from uptime to contact information so uh but you know in general you know those things tend to be now now maybe a function of what network you're on right if you're running a separate management plane that's why it's kind of nice to have two separate uh interfaces uh and uh because you can connect to multiple networks or add extended subnets or or things like that to to to, to get you into other spaces yeah thanks very much james yeah uh, thank you Great james question. i have another question this uh, Obviously, it has a lot of uh, NXG in its in its history, in its genealogy. It looks like it's got an Android front end. Does this mean you also have like an app store? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh shoot, yeah. Hang on, good question. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Got it. All the things I forgot to demo. Uh, okay, so let's go back to our VNC guy and let's clean this out. Okay, so yeah. In fact, in fact, what I should have shown was. So, so it does run Android apps. We've taken Android and completely uh, torn it apart, right? We have our own routing tables. Of course, we don't have SNS. We have nothing to do with the play services, right? We, we've hardened it. You know, think of it as just sort of the, the, the virtual machine that runs the apps. But, but here's the home page. And and uh, and then and then I'll just swipe over. I built out a page with uh, with with uh, book links. In fact, I could go to Mobility Field Day and uh, and come down here. And probably even even see uh, you know Tom's smiling face. Uh, there he is. You know I can play him. Uh, and uh, and so uh, so there we go. Uh, I can come over here and 
So, and, and then and then here on another page, I put some apps on, right? So we have the full Play Store where vendor apps, you know, Cisco, Mist, or Rube, or Meraki, you know, who doesn't have who doesn't have apps? I I I, I like the, uh, the the printer, the little label maker apps because they run across Bluetooth. And in fact, it's kind of cool because if you if you're if you're a label freak, you can come in here and and take this and yeah, copy this. And and I can just go paste it into any of those other apps, right? So so uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so James, you, you you were talking earlier about the the NetAlly app sort of feeding into each other. If you had a third party app that triggers something that you might not otherwise have visibility into, are you consuming that as well, or is that beyond? You. Yeah, I mean, well, we can run we can run most Android apps. Uh, there's a few that are hardwired to cellular, and we don't have cellular, but we tend to, you know, one of the one in fact one of the. Uh, uh, I, by the way, shout out to the engineering team, right? I mean, just you know, but one of the many nuts that were cracked was was how to replace the Android routing table. And think about Etherscope, right? We have four different ports we have to route out. You know, a phone only had to deal with Wi-Fi or cellular. Maybe CBRS, right? Will will start happening. But but you know, uh, but yeah, we we uh, uh, we run apps, and as long as they're sort of using that, hey, I'll use. I'll use, you know, the, the, oh, and we have our own precedence, right? In fact, on Etherscope, it's, we'll run out wired net and Wi-Fi net, then, then, then wired management and Wi-Fi management. That's our precedence, right? The same way a phone would be like, oh, I'm running this out Wi-Fi if I got it and then cellular if I have to, right? And so, so, uh, so, but in general, you know, we run most of the apps, you'll be able to, and it's kind of cool because, you know, we can do a lot, but we, but, you know, an app is really a vendor saying, hey, I've got secret sauce on my thing and I I'm going to use secret protocols to pull it up into my UI, and I'm going to have information or controls there that I would never, that we're not going to get through SNMP or any public means. So, so the apps really let you, you know, uh, you know, deploy your Bosch surveillance camera, or 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 get to your IoT devices, or or produce your labels, or 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 uh, you know, you know, even if you're trying to figure out an AP, like I can use the Mist app. I should have put it on here, and it'll blink the LED on the AP. You know, night. Well, you can run that on the air check now, right? So, uh, so yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a lot going on here. But, uh, but you know, and it's just kind of nice that you can organize these pages and have all your, all your shortcut links. You know, if I wanted to, if I wanted to provision my, my uh, whatever through the, through the, uh, you know, through the web interface, I, I, I could. Uh, although it's not coming up right now, but, uh, but the, uh, but yeah, you kind of get a, a sense for. For, for that. And then there's, of course, all of our stuff. Uh, and uh, so. So as, as far as apps are concerned, do, do they have access to the USB-C port? So if I wanted to run an Android app from another wireless tools vendor to hook into another external diagnostic tool, you, you bet, I could you run bet. that? You bet, yeah. Yeah. In, in, fact, in fact, one of the beauties of the USB-C as we implement it was it's uh, USB on the go. So what that means is you can plug a thumb drive in and, and it looks like a peripheral or a printer or anything else, but you can also plug your laptop in and it looks like a file system, right? So, uh, and, and then we also put two USB-A ports on there, right? Because a lot of things are gonna run A. In fact, our, our, our spectrum analyzer, which I didn't even get to, you know, is, you know, runs, runs on the, on the, uh, on the uh, uh, A port. Uh, and uh, so, yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, uh, you know, pre pretty full yeah, external antenna connector. Uh, yeah, USB-C is just great, right? Uh, it, 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 in so many ways, it, it, it does a lot for us. Uh, and uh,